This is a Zen. That's helped me tremendously with my health. You take it. Oh, in your stomach? In your stomach. Is semaglutide, better known as Ozempic or Wagovi, the miracle weight loss drug that you've all been waiting for? Well, today we are going to dive into this topic. We're going to be covering this under the skin injectable drug utilized for chronic weight management in adults. This is the first drug approved by the FDA for obese or overweight individuals since 2014. We're going to talk about what it is, how it works, some of the chemical alterations that make it last longer in the body, the real downsides and negative side effects, of course, and final solution, alternative solution here, we will always give the nutritional and lifestyle strategies that make the most impact to your overall health. In all of these videos, especially ones like we're covering today, when it involves drugs, I cannot, I will not tell you what to do, how to take them, but I will give you enough information and hopefully give you enough tools and understanding so that you can make a better, more informed decision on what goes inside of your body. But at the end of the day, you must be working with a trained medical professional that is not myself. And without further ado, let's get on to the juicy stuff. So what is semaglutide, Wagovi, or Ozempic? It is a GLP-1 receptor agonist traditionally used for treating diabetes due to their glucose lowering effect, which we'll cover in a second, but they've also been shown to result in weight loss. These drugs mimic a protein or hormone in the body known as GLP-1. This is a well-known incretin hormone, a term used to describe a group of the metabolic hormones that essentially have a glucose lowering effect due to its effect on the pancreas. Under normal conditions, this compound is produced in the L cells found in the distal ileum and in the colon of the small and large intestines and primarily released after the consumption of food. So yes, protein, carbohydrates, and fats are all potent stimulators of GLP-1. It's really important at this point to just understand once your body produces GLP-1 and what these drugs are supposed to mimic, how it affects the various tissues inside of the body. So we are going to be covering three organs that Ozempic or Wagovi targets, as well as the native GLP-1 hormone. The pancreas, the gut, the brain, muscle and adipose tissue, as well as our tongue. First of all, the pancreas. In the pancreas, GLP-1 or Ozempic or Wagovi are going to actually stimulate specific cells in the pancreas known as beta cells to increase insulin synthesis as well as release. Additionally, it can actually increase the mass of beta cells via proliferation and basically the new creation of cells, a process that is known to be or argued to be inadequate in individuals with diabetes. This particular organ and the benefits or the effects that GLP-1 and GLP-1 receptor agonist has is a, is a huge reason why this drug is such a great drug for diabetes, for the treatment of diabetes. Next, the gut. In the gut, GLP-1 and Wagovi are thought to have influence over the vagus nerve and mechanoreceptors, which when stimulating these specific receptors leads to a decrease in gastric motility. This essentially means that there is a slowing down of intestinal movement and gastric emptying when GLP-1 is present or in the presence of Wagovi or was that, uh, Ozempic. Moving on to the brain, GLP-1 is known to have a direct and indirect effect, increasing measures of satiety, meaning the feeling of fullness and decreasing hunger in a particular area of the brain called the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus. It's also going to have effects in adipose and muscle tissue, essentially 
keeping this simple here, it increases measures of insulin sensitivity, which is something that diabetics struggle with. And then finally, the tongue. Here, it actually increases taste sensitivity such that individuals can have an aversion to sweet nutrients. So it's really no wonder why so many pharmaceutical companies, celebrities, media, influencers, physicians are really excited about utilizing Wagovi or Zempic for a weight loss drug when we really understand the mechanisms of how it can improve insulin sensitivity and reduce your hunger, which ultimately leads to less food intake and weight loss. So all this sounds great, right? Well, before celebrating and going off and experimenting with this drug, let's dive into the real downsides and the negative side effects that this drug can have on the system. Let's first start with what happens in the body just after a few chemical alterations. So this compound, remember mimicking GLP-1, the hormone, is altered in such a way that it lasts up to 165 hours in the body. And this is great for individuals for compliance issues. Nobody wants to be injecting a drug two to three times a day. This is a once a week injections that has a very long lasting effect. 165 hours. Native, normal GLP-1 lasts for two minutes. That is a 500,000% increase in time exposed to a compound just by a few alterations in chemical structures. This is essentially tricking our body into thinking it's full without being fed. Think about the complications that could arise from this. I know I have a ton of thoughts racing through my mind. So not all weight loss is healthy, right? Just because you lose weight does not equal radical health. And we see this in some of these sub studies of the clinical trials on Ozempic and Wagovi. There was a subset of individuals who underwent DEXA scans and found that up to 40% of the weight that was lost was actually lean body mass, meaning muscle, bones, collagenous tissue, and organ mass all decreased alongside the fat mass. This is, in my opinion, far from optimal health. The next thing here that I want to read directly off the screen is from a point of care resource that healthcare professionals use. It's called Up to Date. This is specifically on semaglutide. US boxed warnings. In rodents, semaglutide causes a dose dependent and treatment duration dependent thyroid C cell tumor at clinically relevant exposures. It is unknown if this causes similar results in humans as it has not yet been determined. According to the manufacturer, human cases of medullary thyroid carcinoma have been reported with liraglutide, another GLP-1 receptor agonist. We don't know what this is going to be doing to our bodies in the long term. This drug has only been out since 2012. So my concerns really revolve around the safety profile. Additionally, semaglutide may meet the criteria for a hazardous drug. Semaglutide may cause carcinogenicity, teratogenicity, reproductive toxicity, and has a structural slash toxicity profile similar to existing hazardous agents. I do not want to be the guinea pig for this. And ultimately, it's going to be your choice whether to be or not. It's also well known that these drugs cause significant adverse reactions, the most common being GI disturbances. So here think nausea, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and more. It also has been shown to increase the incidence of gallbladder issues. So think stones and inflammation, sometimes even leading to hospitalization and the removal of the gallbladder completely. In diabetic patients, people struggling with diabetic retinopathy. Use of this drug has been shown to increase complications such as vitreous hemorrhaging, essentially bleeding of the eyes and 
diabetic related blindness. There's acute kidney injury. There's pancreatitis. The list really goes on. And like I said, this drug has only been around since 2012. So how confident can we really be in the full safety profile of this drug? Ultimately, it is your choice whether to experiment or not. But remember, if you don't change the fundamental behavior behind what caused you to gain weight in the first place, this drug is not going to work. In fact, the data shows that if you don't change this behavior and you get off of this drug, you are going to get, you are going to gain your weight back and sometimes even more. The likelihood is increased significantly here. So what's the alternative? Is there a better way? Of course, in our opinion, there's definitely a better way utilizing a real nutrient dense food approach with intentional lifestyle changes that can actually achieve the same results and sometimes even better. I'm going to cover five steps here with the main focus being on step number one, which is increasing protein. Increasing protein is going to provide your body with an abundance of micronutrients, amino acids, vitamins, minerals that are going to help promote satiety. They're going to help repair, rebuild, preserve your lean body mass. Several studies have actually shown that a high protein diet can result in just as much, sometimes even more weight loss while preserving your lean body mass, meaning improving your body composition compared to studies with semaglutide where up to 40% of the weight loss is coming from lean muscle mass, essentially putting you into a more fragile state, sarcopenic and essentially weaker. Number two, cook your own food. You can do this for 30 days and I guarantee you, you will feel better. This is a way that you can control the ingredients, the quality and the quantity and an easy way to improve your baseline health. Number three, eliminate processed foods. This is garbage. These foods cause weight gain. They cause you to overeat. They cause inflammation and so much more. We want to get rid of these foods, processed seed oils, processed grains, processed sugars, your French fries, your cookies, things in bags, avoid them completely. Number four, prioritize sleep. Having a healthy sleep routine is going to prevent you from that late night stack snacking. It's going to help you improve your mood, improve your energy, hormones, and ultimately lead to better performance and fat loss, a better body composition. Number five, move frequently. This cannot be stressed enough. Moving frequently throughout the day as much as possible that you can do is so important. Even if it's just walking 10, 20, 30 minutes, if that's where you need to start, start there, start somewhere, take action and start to move daily. I'm sorry to break this news to you, but there are no shortcuts when it comes to weight loss, dieting, feeling better. We all have to put in the work and Wagovi, Ozempic, this is just a bandaid. If we don't change the fundamental behaviors that led us to gaining all of that weight, causing inflammation, low energy, low libido, then it's just going to continue. Once we remove that bandaid, we have to fix the fundamental behaviors. Don't just listen to me, go listen to other health experts, listen for common themes and experiment for yourself. The journey is the fun part. And this is really where I found so much satisfaction, diving into an animal based diet, figuring out which foods my body operates best on. And an animal based diet provides a lot of these fundamental nutritional factors that help you feel better, perform better, lose weight. Ultimately, it's your decision. But I'm here 
to share information, to share resources, and to at least help guide you so that you can make a, a better and more informed decision about what goes inside your body. If you found value in this video, I'd suggest checking out our past videos on chronic dieting and targeting fat loss. Some of the same problems that we see with these drugs, GLP-1 receptor agonists, Wagovi, Ozempic, are seen in hypo, low calorie states. So go ahead and check those out. And if you found value in this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, comment, do what you gotta do. My name is Dylan Randolph. I'm always here for you guys, and we'll see you next time.